Good Nick. to see you. Yeah. Have a seat right here. Thank you. Well, thank you for sitting down with me today. Oh, thanks for having me. All right. Good day, everyone. I'm Dr. Richard Reynolds, superintendent here at Garfield High City Schools, back with another Grow with Garfield staff spotlight with the district's very own Gina Wilson, who serves as the supervisor of pupil services. Welcome, Gina. Um, we'll meet with Gina today and share a bit about her background in the community and what she does for students and families in the district. So let's begin. Hello, Mrs. Wilson. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Great, great. So share with us a little bit about your background and how we ended up in this very moment. Yes. So whew, where do we begin? <laughs> I will start by saying I moved to Garfield Heights when I was in fifth grade, 2002. Okay. Um, I started at Maple Leaf Intermediate School. So um, that's where I started my educational journey here in Garfield Heights. Um, and I matriculated through the district until 12th grade. Um, I graduated in 2010, proud graduate of Garfield, um, and knew that I had to come back post-graduation to do something. I didn't know what it was going to be at that yeah. time. Um, so I went off to college, um, went to school in Madison, Wisconsin, where I earned my undergraduate degree, um, and knew Wisconsin was not the place for me. That was <laughs> not my home. A little chilly there. Uh, very cold. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I came back home, Garfield Heights, did not know what I was going to do. I started a job in Cuyahoga County, working for downtown, downtown Cuyahoga County, and knew that was not my job. Yeah. It was good work, but not what was for me. Yeah. Um, I did not go to school thinking I was gonna be in education, to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, but something landed me in the schools and I never looked back. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something that it's my calling, it's my passion, and I know I have a purpose in the educational system. Yes. So with that journey, what tell our audience a little bit about what you do here in the district. Absolutely. So as supervisor of pupil services, um, I work with all stakeholders. That's students, families, community members, um, outside partnerships. Um, and it's really about providing as many resources, services, and guidance to all stakeholders. Um, ensuring that whatever our students, our family, our community needs, um, that the pupil services department is there to serve. Um, and it's very important for us to do the work um, to ensure that we're providing the best opportunity for our scholars, our families, ensure that they feel welcomed in our school district. That's very important. And ensuring that they have everything they need to be successful in school. Yeah. And it's evident because every single time I'm working with a the family, they mention Mrs. Wilson. And that is a, a great thing. And it lets me know that you have been ingrained into this community and, and parents rely on your feedback and your efforts with them to, to serve them as well. So we're very thankful to have you here in the school district. Thank you, thank you. My pleasure. So you mentioned that you are from Garfield Heights. So why was it that important for you to, to return home? Absolutely, um, it was very important. Um, like I mentioned, I started here in fifth grade, graduated from Garfield Heights, um, and I knew that I wanted to return home. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't know what capacity, but I knew I was going to come back home in Garfield Heights. Um, and when I had the opportunity to join the educational system, I just knew that this was it. I wanted to be in a position where I gave back to my community. I was able to provide for students and families in areas that there was a need back then. Um, and I see myself in the shoes of our students and families. I knew that I can be that voice for our students and families and community now in our in our district. It seems like a, a running theme from uh, a lot of our great educators that they are being the resource that they wish they had when they were in school. And it sounds like that's the same for you as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It's very important to me because um, what I, wish I'd known then or what I know now, um, I can be that voice for a lot of our students and our families. Um, I tend to see things through a different lens, growing up in the community, um, knowing the resources that lacked when I came, you know, matriculated through the district um, and knowing what our students and families need now. Providing that voice, allowing them to have a voice and express the need is very important in um, us listening us listening and showing that we listen in our actions and the way we participate and communicate with our families. Yeah. So tell us a little more about your position as the supervisor of pupil services. What is your day-to-day -day and how do you respond to the needs of families? Sure. Day-to-day -day, it's different. Um, making sure that we 
respond to the needs of our students, families, and community, ensuring that resources are provided whenever we're called upon, making sure that we um, provide resources to our building leadership, our teachers, our staff, um, our students, um, and making sure that we're doing what we say we're gonna do. So if someone calls upon us and we say we're gonna do something, we definitely do it. Pupil Services is a great team um, and ensuring that we are meeting our students, our families, our community where they are is very important to Pupil Services and making sure that we are building the success for our students. And, and what was amazing for me was your work with our community partners and how often those partners are within the district. Talk to us a little bit about your community partners. Yes, um, community is everything, yeah. is everything. Um, there are many times where I'm out boots on the ground trying to build new relationships um, because it's very important. I want the community to know that we're in this together, um, that everything that we do out in the community impacts our school district and what we do in our school district impacts the community. And I want our community partners to know that any way that we can collaborate, that's a huge thing I'm on is collaborating, making sure that we have voices at the table, making sure that the voices at the table are heard and that we take what our community members and partners say and we make sure that we honor them. Um, they help our day to day. They help those big engagement events yes. that we have yeah. and they really pull through for us. So that is very important in every partnership that we have. Um, I think it's our partners need to know how much we appreciate them and how much impact they have on our school district and, and every stakeholder involved. So Mrs. Wilson, what is your vision for your department and how far do you intend to go with that vision? Yes, so um, our parents and community look at us as partners. Um, I think it's very important, and I said this before, that we work side by side, our students, our families, and our community, and we bring them in in many different aspects of decision-making, communication, um, and ensuring that um, where they, our community and our families know that we are here for them. Um, growing up in the in Garfield Heights City School District, um, I didn't know what people services was. I didn't know who the people in central office were. And I think it's very important that our families and our students know who we are, know that we're here to serve them, know that we're here as a person they can call on when they need anything. Um, and if we cannot get it for them, we will find someone who will. I think that's very important. Um, and I think we're getting to a point where our community and our families know they can call on us whenever they're in need or whenever they're having trouble with something um, that we will be there to answer them. Um, and that collaboration and that partnership, that's where I want us to continue to grow. And I want our families to know, I know who people, I know who's in people services. I know the work that they do and I know that they're here to serve us. Um, and we're getting to that point, but I want us to grow in that capacity where not only people with services, but every department in our central office and in our district will come together and know that we're working towards the same goal. And that's for educating our students, bringing our families in as partners, and then making sure that we're providing these wraparound services to benefit all stakeholders. Yes, so the, the thing that's so visible about the department is not even the real work that you're doing. You've been able to put on some outstanding, huge events. But the thing that I've seen uh, for myself is how you provided those services, those wraparound services for individual families. And I, I, I need for our parents to understand that you are here specifically for that to, to help them on, even on their day-to-day the -day pieces. Yes, absolutely. That wraparound support is critical in educating our students. Um, our students, they are students, but our families are our families. And it's important that our families know that we're not only here for the students that are in our seats, but we're here to provide them with any resource and service that they need that maybe does not pertain to education. In their mind, it doesn't pertain to education, but in ours it does. Because when they have the resources and supports that they have, that they need every single day to be successful, that means our students are coming to school every day. That means they're coming with the resources that they need. And if they don't have them, what can we do to provide them with that support? It's all a circle. It all ties in together and making sure that our the basic needs are met, resources are met, um, will definitely have a positive impact on our students coming through the doors every single day. So 
Talk to us a little bit about the Stay in the Game initiative and why our partnership with the Browns is so important. Yes, I get so excited yes. with the Stay in the Game initiative oh, yeah. um, because it's very important. Chronic absenteeism is a huge issue that we have in our district and making sure that our students are in school every day is very important. Um, and it's the work that we're doing every single day. Um, and the partnership with the Stay in the Game Foundation and the Cleveland Browns um, is another layer of support. They, um, the Stay in the Game initiative is able to provide us with resources, incentives um, to highlight the attendance piece in our district and making sure that they provide us with resources, um, a platform to um, educate our students and engage our students and families on the importance of attendance. Um, we have a large team with the Stand the Game initiative and our network is phenomenal. Um, the resources that they provide to us, the, um, the pamphlets, the education, the resources to really hone in on not only our students' attendance, but making sure when they're here, they're doing the right thing. Making sure that they're listening, making sure that they're soaking in everything that our teachers are giving them. Um, and when we have some troubles and how we do that, they're there to support us. Um, they have provided us with a tremendous amount of resources, incentives. Our students have been able to go to games. They've been able to be on the field. Um, and that's really just rewarding our students for staying in the game, coming to school, making sure. And we want our students to know that we want them here. We want them in school. Um, it's not only, oh, you're supposed to come to school because it's cool. We want you to come to school because we like seeing your face. We like to see the smile when, or that light bulb when it's, aha, I got it, right? Those are always those great moments. Um, but we have the support of the network, the Stay in the Game Network, to help us drive that work. And their partnership has really been really successful because it has allowed us to really look into our data to see the percentage of students that are not in the seats and how important it is for them to be in those seats. So it really has allowed us to open up another eye on what we can do as a district to support our students and families, but using them as a partner at the same time. So, so there's the stay in the game room yes. at one of our elementary schools. I did not want to leave that space. Talk to us a little bit about the Stay in the Game room that we have set up at yes. Maple Leaf. Maple Leaf has the Stay in the Game room. So um, the Stay in the Game network was so generous in providing us with some resources to build this room. In the room, we have TVs, we have PlayStation, we have Xbox, hockey table, and so much more. Yeah. Um, but it's really a way to incentivize our students for staying in the game. Um, Maple Leaf has done a wonderful job in utilizing the space. We've also had some other in-house field trip opportunities where other students were able to come to the game room um, in the Stay in the Game room, as, as we would say, but really to show that they've been doing the right thing. Yes. Um, it really is another layer added, and our students want to go in the room. They walk by the room and say, whoa, look at that, I want to go in there. Um, and adults want to as well. Yes. Um, but it's really a way to have the students continue to work, continue to come to school, and do the right thing. Um, and our students can earn it as many times as they can get in there. Um, but it's just another layer of support, another, you know, our students need to come to school and also decompress, be able to have that time where they're able to celebrate their win. Um, and that, that room is able to do that for them. And we have seen some great success with utilizing that room um, at Maple Leaf and our students want to come to school. They want to stay in the game, not only come to school, but do what they're supposed to do while they're in school so they can earn that room. Yes. Um, so it's really been very successful um, and in the impact and what it's intended to be for. Um, so our students are taking advantage of it and if they're not making it in that room, they want to know how, yeah. which is a good thing. It's great. Because they want, they want to make it in that room and we've had plenty of students earn that room so far this year. Yep. What an awesome initiative. Yes. Um, I've had students to, to tell me, my goal is to get in that room. And I was like, let's go, what are we gonna do? And then we talk about what they're gonna do to make sure that they have that opportunity. So great work there. Yes, thank you. Right. So it's my understanding that there's a Top Dog initiative. What is Top Dog and how could someone be a part of that? Absolutely, Top Dog. Um, this has been a group that we have had in the making for quite some time. So I'm very excited to announce that Top Dog is coming soon. It is a male mentorship group that we are gonna be inviting all father figures, males in the community, whether you have students in our district or not, 
we want um, all males who are interested to be a part of this group. Um, we're going to start off by really having a visible presence on our school grounds during arrival and dismissal. We want there to be a, an increased male presence to help guide our students on and off property to make sure that we're doing it in a safe way that will eventually lead to some professional development opportunities for this group where they can learn side by side with some of us district employees as we have our professional development days um, with eventually leading into partnership inside of the building where we're able to um, partner with some student groups to ensure that we have that positive male role model figure in our building. That's good. I think it's so important. Um, my father is everything to me. And if he was able to come into our building and be able to, if I know my father's coming, I'm making sure I'm acting right. What? Yes. <laughs> I'm acting right. For sure. Um, For and sure. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's really just having that visible presence in our building and knowing that we have that community support. So that's why I say you don't have to be a parent. You can be an uncle. You can just be a community member that doesn't have children. We want you to be welcome in our school. We want you to come and have that positive impact on not only our students, but our staff members, our, our teachers, our administrators, and be that extra layer of support that we've always needed in our buildings. So top dog. Um, the baby of mine, um, and I think we have some great community partners already um, hit the ground running with me and creating a vision for this Top Dog program. Um, so I'm super excited that it's going to be coming soon. Anyone who's interested can contact me um, if they're interested. We're going to be having a few meetings coming up soon um, to launch off the program and really give some more information. So I'm very excited. Um, I'm just very excited. So am I. I I'm so, so excited because it it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful program for our, for our district. Yes, and, and this is yet another opportunity that um, your department has taken to welcome our parents, our community members to be a part of the school district. And that is extremely important that this community knows that we want them to be a part of the work that we're doing here to serve children. So thank you for that. Yes, absolutely, thank you. Why are the students here at Garfield High City Schools so special to you to the point that you will, would come back to, to serve this community? Hmm. Very special. Yeah. Um, they are who I was back from 2002 to 2010. Our students are a reflection of who I am um, and who I've become. Um, they are extremely special to me, every single one of them. Um, and I want so much for every student that walks these hallways from pre-K to 12. Um, and I make sure that every chance that I get, I make sure that they know that. Um, I want them to aspire to be anything that they want and anything that I can do to help them, um, I will do that. If I see a need, I'm there to fix it. Um, that's a good and a bad thing yeah. <laughs> uh, because it can be a bit overwhelming. Oh, yeah. um, but I make sure that I get it done. And if there is a need and a student, family, anyone comes to me with a need that I will do whatever I need to do to make sure that they have a resource um, to assist with that. That's very good. That is very good. Very important to me. Yes. The very first time I met you, I wasn't really even on the books yet. <laughs> I was, uh, I, it was right at the end of the school year and we were at a field day at Maple Leaf. No, no it was at William Foster. And uh, uh, I said something to you. I said, I'd love to have a community event. And the only thing you said to me was, I need a date. And the next thing you know, we had one of the best events for, for last year, and it was even better this year. Is that something that we can continue to expect from you right there? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, making sure that we engage our community, um, engage our students is number one priority for me. Um, I love this community. I love our students and our families, and. Um, I feel that energy back from them as well. Um, and I listen to them, what they want, what they need. Um, I don't only get the, the data and our survey results and look at them and put them to the side. Um, I see what they need. I see what changes they suggest that I make. And I do that. Um, and I think that's why we have the success that we do at our events, because they know that we hear them and they know that what we do is from a genuine place and we really want to serve our community. And they've done so much in supporting us and I just feel like it will continue to grow. Yes, so, so you know, 
for any school district, parent involvement is always a, a question. But what I've noticed here is that your efforts has increased our parent involvement. How, how have you been able to do that? It took some time, Dr. Reynolds, it did. Um, from the day that works best in the week, from the time that works best, um, to seeing, making sure that during these events we have resources that our parents are requesting. It's really listening to our families and our community and, and acting on what they say. That's the biggest piece of it. Because we used to schedule events and hope that they show. Um, and it wasn't working. Yeah. And, and so we had to reach out and say, how can we get you to come and participate with us at our school? We want you here. What, what can we do? And just listening to their feedback and making sure that we're, we're following what they're saying and doing what they ask, they show up. They show up and they support us in a really big way. Um, and whatever they ask for, we're doing it next. Um, and um, we have a great team that helped to contribute to the family engagement efforts that we have here. Um, and they have to really want it. They have to really see, and you can't kind of get this feeling inside when the event, you know, right before the event, it's, we're running around oh, making so sure all these scary. things are, are going, you know, in place. But when it's happening, you kind of step back and just see all their families and students really enjoying themselves. And it gives you that feeling inside, like it was all worth it. And then when we look at the team that helped out, we're all just giving ourselves our thumbs up and it works. And then when it ends, we're like, all right, what's next? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. But it's it's very rewarding. It's that, that part of the work that's really rewarding. Although difficult, um, it pays off in the end. And we see it from people talking in the community. When we post flyers, people cannot wait to these things happen. Um, and then sharing with other districts. They, we have other districts asking us how we're getting families in, right? <laughs> because we're listening. Yeah. And that communication is key to making sure that we're providing everything and anything under the sun for our families and that they know that we're really genuine about how we serve them. Yeah, so, so family is obvious as family is very important. Whether we're talking about uh, families within this community or your own family. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your, your family and your little ones. Yes, um, husband is a teacher here in Garfield Heights. He became, he became an educator before I became an All education. Right. All right. Um, and our family, my, my personal family, my extended family, we're just about serving. We'll do anything to serve anyone and anybody that we come in contact. I don't even have to know you. And if you ask me for something, we'll do it. Two little ones, Peyton, she's seven years old, first grade. Um, and I have Robert Jr., we call him Deuce. Um, <laughs> one years old, he'll be two in March. Wow. And they, my family, husband and children are my world. And Deuce had a, a special event to just recently happen. Yeah. Tell, tell me about his special event. He had his first haircut. Right. First haircut. And both Robert and I are just like, oh, gee, he's going to have first haircut and it's going to be all choppy because he yes. can't sit still. And he blew us both away. Yeah. He was amazing. And then he looked at himself in the mirror and said, maybe like, is this me? Is this, <laughs> is this who I was before oh, I came yeah. in here? Um, but it was a beautiful experience. Very and nice. I'm so glad I was able to experience it because it's those things that um, we will never forget. And I still got a piece of his hair. You, you have to put that in the baby book right there. Yeah, yeah you gotta got keep it. it. I got the one curl, yeah. one curl that we are able to say yesterday. That's good. Yes. That, that, that is good. So so there is an, a concern that I have. I won't say an issue. There is a concern that I have. Um, it is the fact that I've heard through the grapevine that you, um, your baking skills were <laughs> off the charts, but I haven't seen any pastries, any uh, anything what tell me a little bit about that and does that do something to help you relax or is that just something you love doing um i love to do it yeah. it helps me relax um and it is definitely something i love to do yeah. now why i haven't brought any in <laughs> i just haven't gotten in the kitchen okay. that, that, that uh, much okay. lately um, but i'll be sure i i, I bring something in yes. for, for my central office family yes. and, and other buildings to to try out but it's definitely something i like to do to kind of relax myself Set myself aside from work and other things that we have going on, and my family enjoys it. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, that's a plus. They really enjoy what I what I make. Um, but it's definitely something that relaxes me, it calms me, and then I get a beautiful something out of all that time I put in the kitchen. Nice. So it's always a good thing. So so um, so what is your specialty? Um, I do a lot of cupcakes. Oh. Cupcakes are 
I my love big cupcakes. thing. I love big cupcakes. Big thing. From red velvet to oh. German chocolate to peach cobbler. <sighs> I do it all. Um, yeah. Special requests. Um, so so I definitely do. I love I love to bake cupcakes. That's that's really good right there. Yes. I, I think um, we wouldn't mind a couple <laughs> dozen cupcakes every now and then when you find that time right there. Absolutely. So what other things do you do to, to relax? Spend time with my family. Yeah. They are my calming zone. Um, although it will seem hectic, that's my safe space. Yeah. Um, my family and my home are everything. And um, although I have to learn how to separate, um, they they are the ones that keep me together. My husband and my children and my family are everything. And um, it helps that my husband's in education too because he understands. Yes. He understands yeah. and he gets it. Um, so he's my biggest supporter and he's got my back in everything I do. So it's my family is everything and they keep me going. Ms. Wilson, thank you so much for your efforts here in the school district and just taking the time to, to speak with me to, to share this with our audience. Yes. Really appreciate your time. Well, thank you for having me and I'll do it anytime. I know, that's right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There you have it, folks. Please join me in thanking the special efforts of Gina Wilson and what she does each and every day here at Garfield High City Schools. We hope you enjoyed watching and thanks for continuing to grow with Garfield.